Hi, and welcome to Weekly Dev Tips. I'm your host, Steve Smith, a.k.a. Ardalis. This is episode 22, where we look at one example of the domain events design pattern. Don't forget, you can follow Weekly Dev Tips on Twitter, as well as in your favorite podcast app. And if you're finding these tips to be helpful, please take a moment to leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher. I really appreciate it. It's been six months, and I'm almost up to 20 reviews between Stitcher and iTunes. You'd think we could average at least one review per episode, so we're a little bit behind. This episode is sponsored by DevIQ. DevIQ offers online training for software developers and designers covering topics like UX, .NET development, and I have a course on ASP.NET Core there as well. Check it out at deviq.com. Now let's talk about domain events. Domain events are a domain-driven design design pattern that, in my experience, can really improve the design of complex applications. In this episode, I'm going to talk specifically about how you would benefit from raising and handling these events prior to persisting the state of your entities. So before we go any further, let's describe what a domain event is. A domain event is something that happens in your system that a domain expert would care about. Domain events are part of your domain model. They belong in the core of your clean architecture design. They should be designed at the abstraction level of your domain model and shouldn't reference UI or infrastructure concerns. Domain events are a pattern and one with several different implementation approaches. I generally segment these approaches into two camps, before persistence and after persistence. For this tip, we're going to focus on events that occur and are handled prior to persistence. In a future tip, I'll talk about domain events that should only be dispatched once persistence has been successful. So as a pattern, what problem are domain events designed to solve? Just as with other event-driven programming models, such as user interface events, domain events provide a way to decouple things that occur in your system from things that should occur after that trigger happens. A common example I use is checking out a shopping cart from an e-commerce site. When the user checks out, a variety of other things generally need to take place. The order should be saved, payment should be processed, inventory should be checked, notifications should be sent. Now, you could put all of this logic into a checkout method, but then that method is going to be pretty large and all-knowing. It's probably going to violate the single responsibility and open-closed principles. Another approach would be to raise an event when the user checks out, and then to have separate event handlers responsible for payment processing, inventory monitoring, notifications, etc. Looking specifically at events that make sense to handle before persistence, the primary rule is that such events shouldn't have any side effects external to the application. A common scenario is to perform some kind of validation. Imagine you have a purchase order domain object, which includes a collection of line item objects. The purchase order has a rule that there is a maximum amount associated with it, and the total of all the line item object amounts must not exceed this total. For the sake of simplicity, let's say the purchase order object includes the logic to check whether its child line item objects exceeds this maximum. When a line item object is updated, how can we run this code? One option would be to provide a reference from each line item to its parent purchase order. This is fairly common but results in circular dependencies since purchase order also has a reference to its collection of line item objects. These objects together can generally be considered an aggregate, which is another design pattern. And ideally, dependencies should flow from the aggregate root, in this case the purchase order, to its children, and not the other way around. So let's assume we follow this practice, which means that we can't simply call a method on purchase order from the line item directly. Another common approach I see developers use instead of domain events is to pull all of the logic up from child objects into the aggregate root object. So instead of having a way to update the value of a line item, such as a property setter or its own method, there might be a method on purchase order called update line item amount, and it would do the work. This enables you to perform additional work that the purchase order cares about at that level, but it breaks encapsulation because it causes the root object to become bloated with all of the behavior that should be inside of the child objects. This also makes the child objects turn into simple DTOs and results in a fairly anemic model, at least below the aggregate root. It can work, but it's not very good from an object-oriented design standpoint. So how would a domain event help us here? Well, first, you'd put the logic to modify line item 
on the line item class where it belongs. Perhaps you'd add something like an update amount method. Then, in the update amount method, you would raise an appropriate domain event, like line item amount updated. The aggregate root would subscribe to this event and would handle the event in process, not asynchronously or in another thread. If necessary, the handler could raise an exception. In any case, it could update properties of the root object to indicate whether it was currently in a valid state, which could easily be reflected, for example, in the user interface. This is one particular use case for domain events that I've found very helpful and which I typically refer to as aggregate events, since there isn't a separate event handler type in this case. We're talking about specifically a way for an aggregate to have the children communicate updates back to its parent. This is a fairly common scenario, and it's a special case of how you can use domain events. I have a small sample showing them in action on GitHub, and you can check it out from the show notes. With aggregate events in place, you can check all the blocks for your object design. Your aggregate's dependencies flow from root to children. Your aggregate's child objects are responsible for their own behavior. Changes to child objects are communicated to the aggregate root, which is responsible for ensuring the validity of the entire aggregate. Many scenarios have rules where the root object has to perform validation checks that are based on some aggregation of several child objects, and this pattern can provide an elegant solution to this problem. I hope you'll check it out and maybe find it useful. Would your team or application benefit from an application assessment highlighting potential problem areas and identifying a path toward better maintainability? Contact me at rdallas.com and let's see how I can help. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening. See you next time on weeklydevtips.com.